This will be the proper procedure on adjusting the squeegee assembly and micro switches. With power to the machine in the down position, we will now access our squeegee motor output through the keypad. This will allow us to lower the squeegee assembly to check the present adjustment and make any changes that may be necessary. Simply depress the menu key until the screen reads test output. This will bring us to the first output. If we hit the next key, we can go to the output number that represents our squeegee motor, which is number 11. This is located on the sticker to the left of your keypad. Once we are at the proper output number, we will simply hit F5 or Enter, which will lower the squeegee into the down position. After that has been done, we would now like to disconnect power and we're going to stand the machine up into the transport position. With the machine in the transport position, we're going to check for the proper squeegee crush to the lane. This should be from 1 8 of an inch to 3 16 of an inch. And we will be using a level and a set of feeler gauges to verify this measurement. Place the level lightly against the lane distance wheel and the blades of the squeegee. And what we're looking for is the gap that lies between the drive wheel and the flat base of the level. And that as a starting point should be 125 thousandths or an eighth of an inch equally on left and right side. We'll simply slip the feeler gauges inside and that's pretty close. We also want to pay attention to how the blades rest on the level because this squeegee can also be adjusted as far as blade pitch. We want to make sure that the blades are flat on top and bottom when they are touching the base of the level. If an adjustment needs to be made, we would simply loosen up the quarter twenty nuts that hold the mounting bracket to the side plate. That's going to allow us to lower or raise that squeegee away from the lane. Once we have our level against our LDS wheel and the squeegee blades, and we have made sure that our gap is an eighth of an inch, then we can tighten down the nuts. But pay very close attention that the mounting bracket is not in a down position. Make sure that it is square with the side plate, as that will affect the blade pitch to the lane. In the event that we have to adjust the blade pitch, we would lower the machine to operating position and do that by means of a turnbuckle and a cam. In the operating position, we can now remove the recovery tank and the squeegee switch guard. Located inside, we're going to find our turnbuckle that is going to be used to adjust that front and rear blade pitch. If we have to adjust this, we would simply break loose the jam nuts and actually remove the mounting bolt that goes through the eyelet of the turnbuckle and into the squeegee cam. There's also a jam nut in between the eyelet and the cam, so you might want to hold this with either your finger or a thin half-inch open-end wrench while you unscrew the mounting bolt. Once the turnbuckle is free of the cam, you can adjust the length by turning the eyelet and the threaded rod. Remember that the eyelets and the rod are normal threads. If you adjust only the rod, it will thread into one eyelet and out of the other. So if you're making a large adjustment, it is best to adjust the rod in and out of the one eyelet and adjust the opposite eyelet that equal number of threads. If you lengthen the turnbuckle, you will decrease the amount of contact on the front blade and increase the amount of contact on the rear blade. If you were to shorten the turnbuckle, you will do exactly the opposite. Please make sure that the length of this turnbuckle is not too short because it may possibly stall the squeegee motor and give you a squeegee did not lower error. While we're in this area, let's go ahead and check both of our squeegee micro switches to make sure they have proper over travel clearance. To do this, we would simply loosen up the two bolts that go through the switch and the side plate, and that's going to allow us to raise or lower that switch. We would then put a 25 thousandths feeler gauge in between the actuator arm and the lobe of the cam. Then press the switch to the lowest point and simply tighten up both of the bolts. This will give you proper clearance. This adjustment is made for both the top and the bottom switch.